Hi, my name is Ankita Basu. I'm one of the second year medical students. May I know your name and age, please? My name is Sipshita Basu and I am 25 years old. Nice to meet you, Ipshita. Nice to meet you, too. So then I'm going to examine your cranial nerve, which will involve me to examine your face and neck. So is that fine? Yes, to examine cranial nerves, begin with cranial nerve 1, olfactory nerve, which mediates the sense of smell. If you do assess its function, first be sure each nasal passage is open by compressing one side of the nose and asking the patient to sniff through the other. With her eyes closed and one of the patient's nostrils occluded, pass substances such as vanilla, clove, cinnamon or coffee under the open nostril. If the patient detects the smell, ask him to identify it. Cranial nerve 2, optic nerve, mediates vision. To assess its function, check the patient's visual acuity, visual fields, and removing glass if necessary. Inspect the optic fundi of both eyes. In fundi, be sure to look for ratio of caliber of arteries to veins, look for papilledema, pallor from optic atrophy, and any cup enlargement suggesting glaucoma. Cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6, the oculomotor, trochlear, and abducens nerves that control eye movements. Because these nerves were together so closely, they are examined as a group. Check the extraocular movements in the six cardinal directions of gaze and look for conjugate movements and any of six directions which causes diplopia. Ask the patient if any of the direction makes the diplopia worse. Inspect the eye closely for a symmetric deviation of movement. Determine if diplopia is monocular or binocular by asking the patient to cover one eye or perform cover-uncover test. Test for convergence of the eye by asking the patient to look at your finger as you move it toward the bridge of the nose. Eyes can usually follow your finger to within 5 to 8 centimeters. Identify any nystagmus and involuntary jerking of eyes, ptosis, drooping of upper eyelid seen in cranial nerve 3. The motor portion of cranial nerve 5, trigeminal nerve, innervates the muscles of mastication. Sensory portion of the nerve mediates facial sensation and the sensory part of corneal reflex. To palpate the temporal and masseter muscles, ask patient to clench the teeth. Note the strength of muscle contraction, then ask the patient to move the jaw from side to side. To test the sensory portion of trigeminal nerve, explain your patient how will you assess the pain. With the patient's eye closed, test for pain sensation using the sterile sharp end of the broken cotton swab stick or some other suitable sharp object to stimulate the patient's forehead and cheeks at the points indicated. Occasionally, substitute the dull end for the sharp one as you test scattered areas. Compare symmetrical areas on both sides of the face. If you suspect any abnormalities, confirm it by testing further for temperature sensitivity by using two test tubes filled with hot and cold water. A tuning fork, which usually feels cold, may also be used and made warmer by running it into hot water and drying it before use. Next, test for light touch using a wisp of cotton. Ask the patient to respond whenever you touch the skin. Prepare a fine wisp of cotton. Ask the patient to look up and away from you. Approach the patient from the side out of his line of vision and lightly touch the cornea with the cotton. Normally, the patient's eyes blink and tear. The sensory limb here is carried in cranial nerve 5 and motor response in cranial nerve 7. Cranial nerve 7, facial nerve, innervates all the facial muscles. It mediates taste sensation in anterior two-third of tongue. To assess this nerve, inspect the patient's face at rest. Next, ask the patient to show its teeth. Close his eyes so tightly that you can't open them. Wrinkle her forehead, puff out his cheeks and tense his neck muscles. Normally, the patient can do these maneuvers easily and symmetrically. Cranial nerve 8, acoustic nerve, mediates hearing and vestibular function. Assess hearing with whispered voice test. 
test for air and bone conduction using Weber test and lateralization using the Rene's test. Cranial nerves 9 and 10, which are glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves, mediates the sensory and motor function of palate, pharynx and larynx. To test these nerves, ask the patient to say ah or yawn as you observe the soft palate and pharynx. The soft palate should rise properly and symmetrically and evular should remain midline and each side of posterior phalanx move medially like a curtain. To test the gag reflex, stimulate the back of the throat lightly on each side and note gag reflex. Cranial nerve 11, spinal accessory nerve, innervate the sternomastoid and upper trapezius muscle. From behind, ask the patient to shrug his shoulders upward against your hands. During this maneuver, evaluate the strength and contraction of the trapezius muscle. From in front of the patient, ask the patient to turn the head each side against your hand. Observe the contraction of opposite sternomastoid muscles and notice the force of the movement against your hand. Cranial nerve 12, hypoglossal nerve, mediate the tongue's motor function which in turn affect the articulation of words. First, listen to articulation of patient's words. Inspect the patient's tongue as it lies on floor of mouth. Observe for atrophy and fasciculation. Ask the patient to stick out his tongue. Ask the patient to move the tongue from side to side. 